Hello, hello. I'm Chris Erickson, and I'm going to talk to you about 2024 pot and bong laws. We're going to discuss cannabis and marijuana. We're going to discuss a few Vermont laws and a bunch of federal laws. Now, my big complaint is that United States Senator Bernie Sanders has been in office forever. For some of you, he's been in office and political office your whole entire lives. And marijuana cannabis is still illegal under federal laws, and that still hurts some Vermonters. So we need to discuss that because it's just so unfair. And I'd like to discuss a couple other issues at the end of the video. Um, Bernie Sanders has also talked forever about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And the situation is worse now than it has ever been before. And Bernie Sanders has not done anything that solves the problem. I know the solution. I guarantee you I know the solution. We have to stop giving federal taxpayer dollars out that end up doing the financial research for the pharmaceutical companies. Our federal taxpayer dollars are paying for their research design and development, and we don't get a share of their profits. Our taxpayer dollars are paying for all the new weapons that the, the defense contractors make, and they sell them worldwide. We don't get a share of the profits, even though we paid for all the research design and development. And we are paying for subsidies for corporations like chip manufacturers, which pollute the place. So we're paying double for the chip manufacturers. First of all, our federal taxpayer dollars pay for their subsidies, and then we have to pay to clean up after them. So the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, because this comes out of our paychecks. Bernie Sanders has talked about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer forever. Like I said, he's been in political office since some of you have been born and he's not coming up with any solutions that work. Bernie is bluffing. Bernie is all bluff. He's gotten himself rich, but not everybody else. Bernie is bluffing. I've had it with Bernie Sanders and I'm asking you to give me a write-in vote for United States Senator. My name is Chris Erickson. So now let's talk about pot and bong laws. And please listen. Thank you. Marijuana, also known as cannabis, is illegal under federal law. We're going to look at United States Code. We're going to search first for cannabis because the industry in Vermont and the Cannabis Control Board wants you to call it cannabis. The reason they want you to call it cannabis is that so you won't go searching for marijuana laws with marijuana spelled with a J and marijuana spelled with an H. So if you're only searching for cannabis, you do not find all of the laws. So let's click search. And we can see that there are a whole lot of laws regarding cannabis. And these are federal laws. These are all federal laws regarding cannabis. Now we're going to search for the federal laws regarding marijuana spelled with a J. And we can see that there are a lot of federal laws regarding marijuana spelled with a J. including penalties for simple possession, drug paraphernalia, etc. The list goes on and on. 
Now we're going to search the United States Code for marijuana spelled with an H. And again, we see there are all kinds of laws for marijuana spelled with an H. So when the Cannabis Control Board tells people to talk about cannabis, or if you're intimidated on the internet and somebody tries to bully you and say, call it cannabis, don't call it marijuana, that's because they don't want you to know that there are a whole bunch of federal marijuana laws. The list just goes on and on and on about federal marijuana laws that can trap Vermonters and get them in trouble. And you need to know about them, and it's deceptive for the state legislature to make a cannabis control board without clearly warning and informing people that under federal law, there are many, many codes and statutes regarding marijuana spelled with an H or marijuana spelled with a J. Let's do marijuana spelled with a J again. And do the search. And there we go, marijuana spelled with a J. So there are many, 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 many federal laws regarding marijuana spelled with a J. And they're all in full force and effect and they can trap Vermonters. United States Senator Bernie Sanders has been in political office since he was mayor of Burlington in 1981. He's talked about making marijuana legal, which he has not achieved in 43 years. And he's talked about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And that situation is worse. In the 43 years he has been in political office, the situation of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer is worse. Bernie Sanders has been bluffing all along. On September 8th of 2024, this year, he will be 83 years old. He is older than President Joe Biden. My complaint in my video here about pot and bong laws is that Bernie Sanders has been bluffing all along. He's not going to make marijuana legal under federal law. And as long as it is illegal under federal law, some Vermonters are being hurt. Hi, I'm Chris Erickson. We're going to take a look at some bong laws real quick. There are very beautiful bongs made in Vermont. They're very beautiful. A lot of really great artists in Vermont making beautiful bongs. They do a really great job, really, really nice artwork. But let's look at the bong laws. Title 21 United States Code 863 Drug Paraphernalia. Text contains those laws in effect on September 2nd, 2024. So, under food and drugs and all the, the drug abuse laws, we're going to scroll down to the 863 drug paraphernalia. In general, it is unlawful for any person to sell or offer for sale drug paraphernalia. Um, and then they define it. They say drug paraphernalia means anything like a bong or a pipe or a roach clip they can use for holding a marijuana cigarette. 
So these things are illegal except for the exceptions. This section shall not apply to any person authorized by local, state, or federal law to manufacture, possess, or distribute such items or any item that in the normal lawful course of business is imported, exported, transported, or sold through the mail or by any other means and traditionally intended for use with tobacco products, including any pipe, paper, or accessory. So, a lot of people on the internet are saying, well, you can't sell a bong across state lines unless the person buying the bong says they are going to use the bong for tobacco. So that's just something to be aware of. As long as the person says they're buying the bong for tobacco, that makes it legal if it's sold across state lines. And of course, Vermont artists want to make money. To make money, they want to sell their products online, across state lines. But to be safe, I would estimate from what I've seen on the internet that it's legal if the person says they're using it for tobacco, but not for the use of marijuana. Okay, let's see. Scrolling up here. If they're going to consume marijuana or hashish, then that makes the water pipe or the bong not legal. So it all depends on what it's going to be used for. Legal to sell across state lines if it's going to be used for tobacco, not if it's going to be used for marijuana, apparently. Okay. I'm Chris Erickson, and I'm going to discuss a few pot and bong laws with you for 2024. This is very serious, and it's very important to know what's going on. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson. I'm taking you to the Vermont General Assembly online, to the Vermont Statutes online, to Title 18 Health, Possession and Control, of regulated drugs, cannabis, 4230. Now, let's scroll down to section four. This is section 4234. A person knowingly and unlawfully possessing more than one pound of cannabis or more than 2.8 ounces of hashish or knowingly and unlawfully cultivating more than six mature cannabis plants or 12 immature cannabis plants shall be imprisoned not more than five years or fined not more than $10,000 or both. Now, that means they're going to come and investigate your garden. They're not going to count your tomato plants. They're not going to count your pole bean plants. They're going to count your marijuana plants. And if you have more than six of them, they're going to send you off to prison because it's perfectly legal for someone with a license to grow thousands of them, but you can't grow more than 12 immature plants or off you go to prison for five years. Next, number five, under section 4230, a person knowingly and unlawfully possessing more than 10 pounds of cannabis or more then one pound of hashish or knowingly and unlawfully cultivating more than 12 mature cannabis plants or 24 in immature cannabis plants shall be imprisoned not more than 15 years or fined not more than $500,000 or both. Now, when they say unlawfully, they mean that you don't have a license to grow thousands and thousands of marijuana plants, that the Cannabis Control Board allows a very few people to grow.
The Cannabis Control Board people are unelected officials. So unelected officials decide who can and who can't grow marijuana, and anyone they decide can't, they threaten with many long years of prison in Vermont, and that's wrong. Hello again, I'm Chris Erickson, and I'm going to talk to you about employee drug testing laws in Vermont. Now, we're looking at the Vermont Statutes Online, Title 21, Labor, Chapter 5, Employment Practices, Subchapter 11, Drug Testing. Section 513. Now, what we're concerned about is random or company-wide test. An employer shall not request, require, or conduct random or company-wide drug test except when such testing is required by federal law or regulation. Now, this is important to discuss because a man in Rutland, Vermont, lost his job. He appealed to the Vermont Supreme Court. They ruled on a technicality. He had a state medical marijuana card, but the employer received federal funding. And so the employer was required by federal law or regulation to conduct random or company-wide tests. If your employer receives federal funding, if they are a transportation company, perhaps a school, a college, a university, or a nonprofit which receives federal funding from grants.gov, you may be subjected to random or company-wide drug tests. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Under current federal law, users of drugs that are illegal under federal law, including marijuana, are prohibited from being admitted into federally assisted housing. Federal law also allows landlords to evict residents of federally assisted housing for illegal drug use. Now we need to know, is this why there are so many thousands of homeless, unsheltered people in Vermont living in the woods and on the streets? Again, I'm Chris Erickson and we're discussing pot and bong laws 2024. And I see in seven days, House rules, weed remains illegal for federally subsidized tenants. Now, how can marijuana possibly be illegal for tenants in federally subsidized housing? And is this why we have thousands of unhoused homeless people sleeping on the streets in different places, and in the woods in the state of Vermont. Now, let's track this down. Use of marijuana in multifamily assisted properties. The Controlled Substances Act, 21 United States Code Section 801, categorizes marijuana as a Schedule I substance and therefore the manufacture, distribution, or possession of marijuana is a federal criminal offense. Because the Controlled Substances Act prohibits all forms of marijuana use, the use of medical marijuana is illegal under federal law, even if it is permitted under state law. With regard to questions concerning the use of marijuana in multifamily assisted properties in states 
that have decriminalized the use of marijuana. The controlling authority is Section 577 of the Quality Housing and Work Responsibility Act of 1998. Now, this allows them to deny admission to any household with a member who is the who the owner determines is at the time of application for admission illegally using a controlled substance as that term is defined by the Controlled Substances Act. Now, how would they know? For example, if you have a medical marijuana card at the time of application for federally subsidized housing, they could find out that you were using the medical marijuana because you applied for the medical marijuana card. Notwithstanding any other provision of law, a public housing agency or owner of federally assisted housing shall establish standards or lease provisions for continued assistance or or occupancy in federally assisted housing that allow the agency or owner to terminate the tenancy or assistance for any household with a member who the public housing agency or owner determines is illegally using a controlled substance. So marijuana is still illegal under federal law. You apply for that state medical marijuana card, and you might be denied federally subsidized housing, which might have something to do with why we have so many homeless people sleeping in the woods in the streets in Vermont. January 25th, 2024, Norton and Booker introduce a bill to permit marijuana use in federally assisted public housing. In Washington, D.C., Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton and Senator Cory Booker introduced the Marijuana in Federally Assisted Housing Parity Act today to permit the use of marijuana in federally assisted housing, including public housing and Section 8 housing, in compliance with the marijuana laws of the state, including the District of Columbia, where the property is located. Now, we'll have to see, we'll have to watch and see if this makes it through the House, does it make it through the Senate, Does it ever get to the president's desk? But unless it makes it through the House and through the Senate in the United States Congress and gets to the president's desk and signed into law, until then, marijuana is illegal in federally assisted public housing. Another political issue for pot and bong laws 2024 is that It is not legal to put your profits from selling or cultivating marijuana in a bank. So even though the Cannabis Control Board, a bunch of unelected officials in Vermont, have given licenses to a limited number of people to grow and cultivate marijuana or to sell marijuana, which they call cannabis, it's not legal for them to put their money in a bank. So what are they doing with all their money? What are they shoving it in the mattress? Is the mattress getting lumpy from the millions of dollars they're making? Well, a safe banking act was introduced, which would allow marijuana growers and marijuana sellers to put their money in the bank, but it hasn't passed yet. It's it's in the House of Representatives. As you can see on the bill tracker, it was introduced, but that's as far as it's gotten, and it hasn't even gone to the Senate or to the President. So if it ever gets passed, this bill provides protections for federally regulated financial institutions 
those are the banks that would serve state-sanctioned marijuana businesses. Currently, many financial institutions do not provide services to state-sanctioned marijuana businesses due to the federal classification of marijuana as a Schedule I controlled substance. So, for the unelected officials at the marijuana, uh, the cannabis control board in Vermont, who hand out licenses to a few people to grow thousands of marijuana cannabis plants or to sell so much cannabis that they're making millions of dollars, those people can't put their money in a bank until the Secure and Fair Enforcement of Banking Act is passed or the Safe Banking Act, if it is ever passed. So that is an issue for pot and bong law. Now in the House of Representatives is H.R. 610, Mara 1 to 3 Act of 2023. And the purpose of this act is to move marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. The, this bill moves marijuana to a lower schedule of the Controlled Substances Act. Now, if you click on All Information, you can scroll down and see that there are zero co-sponsors. So, Representative Becca Ballant of Vermont has not signed on as a co-sponsor. Shame on her for not signing on as a co-sponsor. Shame on her. In the United States Senate is S-4226, the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act, introduced May 1st, 2024, this year, by Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. Now, he introduced it, and if you click on All Information, Let's click all information and scroll down. We will see that the purpose of the bill is a bill to decriminalize and deschedule cannabis to provide for reinvestment in certain persons adversely impacted by the war on drugs, to provide for expungement of certain cannabis offenses, and for other purposes. Now, he got 17 co-sponsors, Senator Schumer, Wyden, Fetterman, Murray, Peters, Merkley, Warnock, Butler, Welch, Peter Welch of Vermont, Smith, Gillibrand, Markey, Lujan, Warren, Hickenlooper, Bennett, and Padilla, but not U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders. This was introduced in May, May 1st of 2024, and Bernie Sanders hasn't co-sponsored it. Let's go back to the title again. It's called 4226, Senate Bill 4226, Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act, introduced by Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. United States Senator Bernie Sanders has not co-sponsored the bill. He has not signed on to it. I think Bernie Sanders is just bluffing. I think he's been bluffing longer than some Vermonters have been alive. Just bluffing to get your votes. Blah, 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 marijuana and he never gets it legalized under federal law. Bernie is a big bluffer. Nine years ago, in 2015, United States Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a bill to end federal marijuana prohibition. Now, that was nine years ago. What has happened since then? 
Well, since then, he got zero co-sponsors. It was read twice and referred to the Committee on Judiciary. And then nothing, absolutely nothing. Nine years, nine years we've been waiting. Nine years and nothing has happened. I believe Bernie Sanders is just bluffing. This is Bernie Sanders' big bluff to lead you on and get you to vote for him.